What they don't know is they watching us and I'm watching them. <laughs> frustrated. People are frustrated. You're frustrated. My son called me yesterday on the phone where I could see the picture. And the only reason I haven't checked in is because I have a new granddaughter. I'm not really interested in talking to him. I want to see my granddaughter. But I make pretend like he's important. Come on, someone talk to me. We talked for about 30 seconds. I said, put my granddaughter. Where, where's, the, where's the baby? So I talked to her and make googly eyes. Hey, that papa, papa. Six months old. If you need to see a picture, I have several on my phone. Just meet me after church. I will show you. Say, why are you doing that? I was a pastor for years and I had to look at everyone else's ugly kid for years. I they, they, they come in there and show me these pictures. They say, isn't this a beautiful baby? And I wanted to say, what's wrong? What, 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 what happened? Did they take it out? Of what, happened? what happened? But I've got a beautiful granddaughter. But my son gets on the phone and he says, Dad, I'm very frustrated. Everybody say frustrated. He said, Dad, I'm very frustrated. Because I've been working at this company and, and they keep moving me from department to department. I get as high as I can get. I'm ready for pay raises. I'm ready for bonuses. And they shove me over to another department. Make me start all over. So I just lost $800 a month by being transferred. Now this is the young man I told you about that had walked away from the Lord and went into jail. I had to talk to him by the telephone through the glass window many, many times. God has turned him around. God's brought him a beautiful mate, has a beautiful baby, and he's following the Lord. Come on, somebody say amen. But as a father, what do you say? I said all the things you say. Well, you quit. Go get another job. Or you can believe that God put you there. And if you believe God's put you there, just stand back and watch, watch what God's about to do. Now, I've got a word for all the talented and gifted people. Your talent and your gifts can only get you so far. Your, your smarts can only get you so far. You say, are you a smart man? I have two earned doctorates. But as cute as I am and as smart as I am, I can only go so far. And I've got to get a word from the Lord. Let's look at our Bible. Pull the verse up on here and Luke, read, read it. Luke, Luke, Luke 5, verses 1 through 9. Read it for me. Luke 5, verse 1. So it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Genesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. The fishermen had left, and what were they doing, church? What does that mean if they were washing their nets? It means they were done. How I many of you know that means we're done? We're washing our nets. We're done for the day. Keep reading. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and talked the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep. What did he say to Simon? Into where? Not the shallow water, but the what? He wanted him to launch out the deep. After he had got done speaking, I want you to know, when you hear the word of God, something will begin to stir in your life. So he had, he had finished teaching, and he turns to Simon, and he says, launch out into the deep. And then what did he tell him to do? Let down your nets. Let down your what? Nets. Everyone say it. Let down your nets. N-E-T-N. S. How many of you know that means more than one? Yes. What did Jesus tell him to let down? Yes. His nets. Told him to let down his nets. 
Now, I've got to stop for a moment. I'm a frustrated fisherman. I'm washing my nets. I'm done for the day. And here Jesus comes along, who's the son of a carpenter. And he's about to tell me, not only to launch out a little bit, but launch out into the what? Come on, church, the what? Launch out into the deep. And then he says, let down your what? Not just a little net. But, but I've just washed them. Are you hearing me? I've shut down for the day. Business has not been good. I've shut down. I'm talking to someone right now who is frustrated because you're doing what you know to do. How many of you have ever heard the phrase, if you keep doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep getting what you've been doing? Frustrated fishermen. And Jesus shows up. Somebody in this room, you've been frustrated. And before this service is over, Jesus is going to show up in your life. Come on, church, get a hold of this. The anointing of God is going to reveal something to you. In fact, I want to prophesy to somebody, you're just one idea. You're just one idea away of the whole thing turning around. Keep reading. Let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. We have fished all night long. That's not a Commodore song, all night long. Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. We're so spiritual here at New Bedford. We just don't know what he's talking about. I heard your car radio on coming in here today. Heard your CD player. By the way, it's all right. Because God can use anything. Fishing all night with no results. I want to ask you a question. Look up here. Have you ever worked on a project? Have you ever done something very, worked your hardest and and you had nothing to show for it? Have you ever put your effort and energy into a marriage only for it to end in divorce? Have you ever poured into one of your children? Only to see them do exactly opposite. You talk to them. And you wonder, whose kid are you? You certainly didn't learn this from me. And you're frustrated. And you say, I've done everything I know to do. But I am done. Stick a fork in me. I'm done. Now you understand these frustrated fishermen. I, I, I've only gone out deep sea fishing with a group of fishermen one time. Off the coast of North Carolina. I only went one time. And I got a revelation. I'm not a fisherman. Because once we got out there. And once we started cutting all the bait, and once we started setting all the lines, and once we set a, 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 a net, and, we, and they said, now we're going to wait. And all of a sudden, as we were waiting, the tempest began to roar. And the boat began to rock. And after about 15 minutes, I saw my meal that I had heard earlier. After an hour, I saw things I didn't know. And I knew. I had a revelation. I wasn't a fisherman. When 
We had to start pulling all the fish in and we were pulling them off the hooks as we were pulling up the net and my hands were bleeding and they were cut. I knew I wasn't a fisherman. Fishing is hard business. Raising children is tough business. Being married and staying married has its moments. Is anybody listening to me? And there are moments in life that you get so frustrated, you just say, I'm done. And then Jesus steps onto your boat. Somebody, you need to have Jesus in your boat today. Someone needs to have Jesus in your boat today. And Jesus says, read it again. He said, we've toiled all night. We've caught nothing. Now take it from nevertheless. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Stop. He'll say, I'll let down the what? The net. Net. N. E. Am I wrong? Didn't Jesus say, let down your nets? Huh. Have you ever wanted something more for somebody than they wanted themselves? And, and, and you went to great lengths to make it happy, happen and, and you wanted it more than they did. Everybody say, I'm a, I'm a receiver. Say it again. I'm a you know those clothes you're wearing? You receive those. You know those shoes on your feet? You receive those. Everything you have in your life, you've received. They've all been the Lord's blessing. What did the Bible say in Matthew? Seek not what you're going to wear. Seek not what you're going to eat. Your heavenly Father knows how to take care of you. All you have to do is what? Receive. Everyone say, I'm a receiver. I'm a receiver. Jesus said, let down your nets. And Simon answers and says, what does he say, Jonathan? Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. I will let down the net. The net. Everybody say, uh-oh. Uh -oh. We have a little problem. Because God is expecting to really bless these frustrated fishermen. But because they're so frustrated, watch this now. They have the wrong perspective. Nevertheless, We've kind of given up, but we'll drop down at least one net. What have we got to lose? All night we caught nothing. So we'll drop down a what? A net. Keep reading. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish. And their net was breaking. Oh, stop. Hold the presses. <laughs> they caught such a great number of fish that their what? Net. Their net began to do what? Break. I want to submit to you that are listening to me today and have not already started planning your lunch <laughs> and wondering when I will wrap this up. I'll just keep preaching five minutes longer. I want to submit to you, if you will hear me today, that the great I am, the God of this universe, has a bigger blessing in mind than you can contain. Come on, somebody put your hands together. I want to submit to you that the God of increase is looking for somebody that will just simply believe him. Everyone say believe him. Let me, I wrote this down earlier. Everybody say favor. Favor. 
We hear a lot of talk and teaching about faith. 